The film commences by portraying a man strolling through an urban area. This man is identified as Jake Hunter, a former member of a U.S. military special forces unit who transitioned into a career as a mercenary. In the morning, Jake visited a bar named Salton Sea, situated near the city outskirts. Upon entering, Jake consumed a couple of beers while scanning the bar and searching for someone. Subsequently, a stripper approached Jake and playfully interacted with him. She inquired about Jake's origins, to which he initially remained silent before eventually revealing he was from Vegas. Jake's peculiar conduct caught the attention of Bobby Nichols, a young man who was the son of the bar owner. Bobby appeared irritated by Jake's presence and attempted to remove him from the premises. Jake, unwilling to cause a scene, opted to depart from the location. However, before Jake could exit, Bobby restrained him. Bobby found it strange that Jake knew his name despite their lack of prior acquaintance. Ignoring Jake's attempts to defuse the situation, Bobby provoked Jake further. Consequently, Jake retaliated by slamming Bobby's head onto the table and striking him. The bar's bodyguard intervened and engaged in a scuffle with Jake, but Jake managed to hold his ground. The altercation escalated until Ben Nichols, the bar owner and Bobby's father, arrived with several plainclothes police officers. Ben, a prominent figure in the city due to his wealth and influence, maintains control over many corrupt cops who are willing to accept bribes to shield him from legal repercussions. Accompanied by the police, Ben had Jake arrested and taken to the police station for interrogation. In the interrogation room, Jake opted to stay quiet and withheld any information. Ben and his accomplice corrupt cops persisted in pressuring Jake to talk, citing Jake's unusual journey from Vegas to their town. Ben expressed his aversion to strangers entering his jurisdiction, especially if they harm his son. Shortly thereafter, Ben received a call from his sister Maggie, reminding him of a dinner appointment that evening. Consequently, Ben had to depart, leaving the two police officers behind to continue the interrogation. Once Ben left, one of the corrupt officers named Stone immediately covered Jake's head with a black plastic bag and struck Jake's face in an attempt to coerce him into speaking. Thankfully, the police chief intervened and halted the actions of the two corrupt officers. The police chief, named Kim, assumed control of Jake's interrogation and instructed the two officers to leave the room. Kim then apologized to Jake and removed the handcuffs from his wrists. Taking advantage of the situation, Jake made his escape. He seized Kim's firearm and fled in a police vehicle. Meanwhile, Ben returned home for dinner with Maggie and Bobby. Before enjoying pies prepared by Maggie, Ben took the opportunity to inquire about Jake from Bobby. Ben was taken aback when he discovered a photo of a girl who had previously been Bobby's girlfriend in Jake's pocket. Bobby confessed that he was unaware of Jake's identity and his connection to his ex-girlfriend. While heading to Ben's residence, Jake reminisces about a conversation he had with Murphy regarding Murphy's exit from their special forces role. Murphy, Jake's former captain in the military unit, also transitioned into the mercenary profession. During that discussion, Jake expressed his desire to leave his line of work to lead a normal life with his daughter. Along the way, Jake inspects the police car's trunk to assess the quantity of weapons stored there. Just as Jake prepares to proceed with his journey, he receives a message from Kim urging him to surrender immediately. However, Jake declines, as he is determined to continue searching for his missing daughter, Melissa, who has been absent for several weeks. The scene shifts to Ben and Maggie engaging in a business meeting with their associate named Greenberg. Ben and Berg are having a conversation about a lucrative aquifer business situated in the Southwest, capable of yielding billions of dollars daily. Following the conclusion of the meeting, Maggie returned home, while Ben opted to linger outside for a smoke. Unexpectedly, Jake emerged behind Ben, brandishing a firearm. Jake requests Ben to arrange a meeting with Bobby, as he intends to inquire about his daughter's whereabouts. Bobby, upon noticing Jake and Ben, promptly approached Ben, seeking clarification on the situation. Jake aimed his gun at Bobby and demanded to know his daughter's location. Despite Ben's attempts to intervene, Bobby divulged everything. He confessed that he and Melissa attended a party together where they indulged in drinking and drugs. Tragically, Melissa overdosed and died suddenly. Enraged by this revelation, Jake fatally shot Bobby in the chest. Upon hearing the gunfire, Maggie swiftly grabbed a rifle from the balcony and shot Jake in retaliation. Jake swiftly fled towards the date palm fields in an attempt to evade capture. However, the corrupt policeman under Ben's command quickly pursued him into the heart of the field. 
A tense shootout ensued between Jake and the police amidst the fields. Despite having limited ammunition, Jake managed to subdue all the corrupt officers hot on his trail. In the meantime, Stone contacted another officer named Barlett for assistance and instructed him not to inform Sheriff Kim about the situation. Upon Barlett's arrival, he and Stone ventured back into the fields to locate Jake. They discovered several deceased officers scattered across the area, prompting Barlett to become alarmed and decide to return to the police station for reinforcements. However, Stone remained determined to continue the search. As Barlett was about to retreat to his vehicle, Jake intercepted him, almost resulting in Barlett's demise. Barlett pleads with Jake to release him, asserting that he isn't involved in the corruption orchestrated by Ben. Jake agrees to let Barlett go under the condition that he informs Sheriff Kim of Jake's location at Ben's date palm plantation. Barlett then heads back to the police station and discreetly informs Sheriff Kim about Jake's whereabouts. Later that night, Stone emerges from the date palm field, unable to locate Jake. Meanwhile, Greg visits Ben, urging him to keep the incident under wraps to prevent negative publicity. Bregg fears that if the media catches wind of the situation, investors may withdraw their funds. Meanwhile, Jake, severely wounded, seeks refuge in a hut within the date palm field. He endeavors to extract the bullet lodged in his body and tend to his injuries. At that instant, memories of Jake's moments with his daughter flooded his mind. Melissa often felt let down by Jake because he was always preoccupied with work, leaving her feeling neglected. Reflecting on these memories filled Jake with immense sadness and guilt towards his daughter. That night, Jake found himself shedding tears alone in his hiding place. The following morning, Murphy arrived at Ben's residence via helicopter to discuss Jake's situation with Ben. Murphy implored Ben to disclose Melissa's whereabouts to Jake, knowing that Jake would relentlessly pursue the truth until he found his daughter. Meanwhile, Jake, still recuperating from his gunshot injury, reminisced about the time he entrusted Melissa to his close friend, Bill. Jake turned to Bill for assistance in caring for his daughter, who was struggling with a marijuana addiction. Believing that Bill's own past experience with marijuana addiction could be beneficial, Jake entrusted his daughter to him without explanation before swiftly departing, a decision that later haunted him with deep remorse. The following day, Jake found himself unexpectedly ambushed by Stone and his cohorts, the corrupt cops. Overpowered and subjected to a barrage of insults from Stone, Jake endured their assault. However, he managed to turn the tables, incapacitating each corrupt officer one by one until he held Stone captive. Intentionally sparing Stone's life, Jake aimed to interrogate him for information. Soon after, Sheriff Kim arrived, prompted by Jake's call for assistance. Recognizing Sheriff Kim's integrity, Jake sought her help in uncovering his daughter's whereabouts. Learning that Ben had concealed his daughter, Jake implored Sheriff Kim to thoroughly investigate Ben's involvement. Jake confronts Stone about his daughter's whereabouts when he returns to the location where he kept him. Stone claims Ben killed Melissa after she overdosed. Jake becomes enraged when he discovers Stone <laughs> and murders him. Jake he screamed loudly, feeling very sad and sorry for what had happened to his daughter. Meanwhile, Murphy visits the police station to meet Kim. Murphy plans to collaborate with Kim to solve the case. Jake discovers his daughter has vanished in a flashback scene. He came to see Bill because he couldn't contact his daughter for a few days and was worried. Unfortunately, upon visiting Bill's house, Jake received the disheartening news that Melissa had left with a young man named Bobby from the Salton Sea Bar. Bill expressed deep disappointment that Jake had not been there for his daughter when she needed him the most. The following day, Jake contacted Kim, who was at the police station. Murphy, who happened to be present, urged Jake to surrender himself. However, Jake couldn't bring himself to do so as he hadn't yet located Melissa's whereabouts. Despite knowing that his daughter was likely deceased, Jake remained determined to find her body. He then enlisted Murphy's help in bringing down Ben and his entire operation to uncover the truth. The next morning, Jake set out for the city center to execute his plan to expose the cover-up orchestrated by Ben. As Jake found himself in the town center, the police began to encircle him and open fire. Armed with a machine gun, Jake fought back, successfully incapacitating most of the officers in the vicinity. Witnessing the escalating situation, Sheriff Kim, Barlett, and Murphy had no choice but to intervene and assist Jake, rescuing him from the skirmish. Shortly afterward, the trio located Jake and he requested to be taken to Ben's house. 
Meanwhile, Ben and Maggie engaged in discussion outside their residence before Maggie returned indoors, followed by Ben. However, upon entering the house, Ben discovered that Jake had already taken Maggie hostage. Jake compelled Ben to divulge the truth about his daughter's fate. Ben confessed that after Melissa overdosed on drugs, he callously drowned her in a nearby lake, despite her still being alive and capable of being saved. Jake covertly recorded Ben's confession with Sheriff Kim's assistance, intending to use it as evidence in court to secure Ben's imprisonment. Kim and Murphy then called for backup from additional police officers to apprehend Ben at his residence. Mistakenly believing that the approaching police sirens signaled the arrival of corrupt officers under his employ, Ben's apprehension grew. Upon leaving the house, other police officers promptly apprehended him. At that moment, Jake was on the verge of killing Ben in front of the police, but Murphy and Sheriff Kim intervened to prevent it. Murphy solemnly remarked that Ben's demise wouldn't resurrect Melissa. Recognizing this truth, Jake relinquished his weapon and handed over all the cases to the police. Subsequently, Ben and Maggie were arrested and escorted to a police vehicle. Meanwhile, Jake departed from the scene, feeling profound remorse for his daughter. In the story's culmination, the police car transporting Ben and Maggie was unexpectedly halted in the middle of the road. In a merciless act of vengeance, Murphy ruthlessly shot Ben and Maggie in the head, seeking retribution for Melissa's death and the injustices she endured. The film imparts the moral lesson that one should never strive to be a hero to the world when they fail to be a hero to their own child. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want to watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you again soon. Take care.